So I'm going to talk um, about what is it, the symptoms and causes, treatment and management, and maybe some strategies that we can use to move forward on days that your inner bird doesn't feel like chirping. Uh, so, what is fatigue? The International Myeloma Foundation describes cancer or cancer treatment fatigue as a distressing, persistent, subjective sense of tiredness or exhaustion that isn't proportional to recent activity and it interferes with your usual functioning. It's different and more severe than normal fatigue and tends to last longer and simply resting doesn't help. Patients have told us that it negatively impacts their quality of life and that of their family's quality of life. And it's actually more than 70% of patients will experience. So it's not, you know, um, when you tell people initially that you have fatigue, they go, oh, well, you know, you're a bit tired, go to bed, have a rest. It's not that. So that's why we also talk about communication and, and tell people actually, actually what it is that you're feeling. So symptoms of fatigue. There are so many possible causes of fatigue with myeloma. No myeloma patient is the same as another. You may find you experience one or a number of the symptoms that are underneath here. Some of the symptoms patients describe include exhaustion, lack of energy, can't make a decision, shortness of breath, just going around your normal day-to-day -day routine, especially if you've got the uh, anemia as well. Um, surprisingly, you might find that you're sleeping too much or actually that you actually can't sleep and you have insomnia. Um, there may some, be a cognitive impairment. Um, so that would, patients describe having difficulty concentrating, hard to make decisions. Some patients have issues with low mood, poor memory, hard to get motivated. Even dizziness can actually be a part of fatigue and balance. <laughs> We all know how it feels to be extremely tired, but you can get emotional, irritable, all the things above. But in myeloma, in the setting of myeloma, these symptoms are absolutely magnified. So why are you fatigued? Causes of fatigues, again, individual, more than one factor. Um, and finding or identifying the cause with myeloma is the essential key to managing it and treating it. So why might you ex be experiencing fatigue? Myeloma, like all cancers, can cause a really debilitating fatigue in itself, apart from the fatigue caused by treating the disease. And one major factor can be anemia. The actual myeloma cell interferes with the blood producing capacity of the bone marrow. This is regardless of chemotherapy, the actual disease. It often leads to a shortage of red blood cells. And you probably know that red blood cells carry oxygen around our body to our organs and our tissues. So when you've got less red blood cells, you've got less oxygen moving around there. So even your normal day-to-day -day activities can be really, really severely curtailed because you just get too short of breath, um, exhausted, and you just you just can't do what you did before your diagnosis. and. Um, 60 to 70% of myeloma patients are actually anemic when they're diagnosed. So you get that back of, I just don't feel right, and you go to the doctor and blood test and away you go. So another major reason for fatigue is some myeloma patients have an increased level of cytokines, which are produced by the increasing number of myeloma cells in the bone marrow. They're molecules and um, Dr. Molle actually had a few of those with all the different treatments and all the immune system at the moment. Um, he touched on that and their job is to guard the body. So they're released by the body um, by the, um, in inflammation settings, in unwellness, but high, they're also released by the myeloma cells and they help the myeloma cells. So they, they, um, they aid the myeloma cells and pro proliferate and they actually cause you to feel fatigued. Um, very much like the fatigue you have when you're fighting a virus, but it lasts much, much longer. So actual treatment for that kind of fatigue is to treat the myeloma. So get rid of those myeloma cells so they can't be producing these things. Pain is another cause of fatigue, and um, some patients with myeloma can have painful bone disease, peripheral neuropathy issues. Um, so persistent pain and pain that's not very well managed can lead to that exhaustion and fatigue, and so it can also be the side effect of some of its treatments. So um, some opiates, some antidepressants and things like that. So 
they can add to your fatigue. So it's a little bit like there's so many, so many different causes. Never underestimate, and I'll talk a bit about it a bit more later, later that psychological and the emotional effects of the diagnosis, stress, anxiety, it all adds to that cyclical function of one thing feeding into the other. Uh, lots of myeloma patients are diagnosed also with poor kidney function, or those, um, the kidneys get clogged up by the myeloma cells. Uh, so, and the kidneys also assist in making red blood cells. So they produce a hormone called erythropoietin. So if the kidneys aren't working, they can't produce those red blood cells. And again, it adds to that anemia and you feeling fatigued. And they can't filter the blood properly as well. So you can get some electrolyte imbalances, which don't make you feel very nice at all. Lots of people would be referred for, to a renal physician and he'll manage that as well. And there might be just other medical problems on the back of the, on the, back of the myeloma. Infection was obviously one of the big ones and it increases the body's uh, need for energy at a time when you actually might not want to eat the side effects of the antibiotics, the side effect of having um, an infection and that adds to all of these risks. And medications just for other just for other conditions, but that's why it's so important. Um, you know, inadequate nutrition, it's so important to um, speak to your medical team because they can look through all these points and maybe start to go, okay, well, we can tweak this, we can get rid of that, but you have to have that. So communication, again, is really, really important. How do myeloma treatments cause fatigue? Peter spoke um, a fair amount about the different types of fatigue that, uh, that fatigue, sorry, the different type of treatments that cause fatigue as well. Um, chemotherapy and stem cell transplants, I've lumped, I've lumped these two in together because bas it's basically a stem cell transplant, you're getting a high dose of chemotherapy. So the chemotherapy has side effects, it affects the, um, the myeloma cells and it also affects the good cells in our body. So increases the body's energy requirements and side effects like nausea and vomiting and all of those things that can lead to increases in fatigue because you, your nutrition is down, you've got no great cells, your blood counts are down, so all of that, there's no, there, you've got no fuel in the tank, so to speak. Radiotherapy is another one that, can, that myeloma patients commonly use to get treated some of their lesions. Um, it can cause fatigue regardless of the site being treated. And that fatigue lasts for about three or four weeks after treatment. And again, healthy cells as well as the myeloma cells are damaged. And steroids, we spoke about the lovely steroids with Dr. Molle. Um, and I'd imagine everybody who has had issues with myeloma in here has had steroids at some stage in their, in their treatment regime. Um, they can cause insomnia, they can affect mood and energy levels. You might find while you're on them, your energy levels are awesome and you can go and go and go all day. And then, you know, day one after the steroids stop, your energy levels go bang right down and you don't think you can um, move off the couch. Uh, they can also cause muscle wastage, especially in your, uh, in your bigger muscles, which makes it a bit more difficult to get off the couch as well. Um, and the new things that uh, Dr. Molle was talking about, the immunomodulatory drugs, so drugs with lots of syllables, thalidomide, Revlimid, Velcade, the newer therapies as well, the pomalidomide, the carfilzomib and the elituzumab, all of these, it's the, all of their initial side effect over 50%, um, it's fatigue. So, and that, and that comes in some of the things that Dr. Molle was talking about, about those, the, what they do and they attach to those, to those myeloma cells and that, um, that causes that fatigue side effect. Um, what makes fatigue worse? <laughs> Free matches at the end, just in case anybody needs them. Uh, yeah. um, so stress, anxiety, depression, we talked about that, um, the effect it has on your emotions and, and, and that might need to be managed as well. So insufficient fluid intake, poor nutrition, changes in routine. If you've suddenly got, you know, three, three hospital appointments at seven o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 
that's going to knock you around and, and add to that. So it's all a, it, it helps. Management, again, research was also shown down the bottom here. We've got inactivity. Research is showing now that inactivity can contribute to fatigue. Anemia, which we've spoken about, infection. So there's lots of reasons. So it's really, really speak up so we can work out which reason is, is, is yours. And it might be a couple. So how do we manage? How do we manage fatigue? Again, depends on the cause. Everybody's an, everybody's an individual, and hopefully now I'll say something positive after not saying so much positive stuff just in the last couple of slides. So myeloma. If your fatigue is being caused by the myeloma, then the best thing to do is treat the disease. Anemia, treat it with a blood transfusion in Australia, which we know. There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to diet. Often during the course of your treatment, you may be referred to a dietitian. Mary Ann spoke about um, the All About Me, where, the di where we've got a dietitian coming on Saturday. And sometimes it's good, um, you might be referred to a dietitian in the hospital. Sometimes it's good just to, even, even if it's one appointment, just to run by, this is, what I, this is what I'm thinking. There's so many issues with diet when you're having chemotherapy and treatment and maybe not wanting to eat, maybe the steroids are making you eat too much, all of these different things. Last month, last March we had a, um, a seminar for, called Cooking for Chemo at the Golden Pig Cooking School. Um, and there were, one of the chefs that ran it had had leukaemia. So he'd had a long history of, he'd had a lot of chemotherapy. So he gave some really great strategies about eating when you're, when you're maybe not feeling so crash hot. Um, got changing taste, changing lifestyle. So blood cancer treatment can impact on your diet and nutrition whether that's related to keeping your food intake up, finding foods that don't make chemotherapy side effects worse, or just finding ways to create meals that fit with that new lifestyle and the new things that are being imposed upon you. Lots of things with the diet that people tell us, eat little and often, cook when you have the energy, freeze portions, but again, you know, proper food hygiene is really important in the setting of myeloma as well. You, don't, you, you wanna get things into the freezer pretty quickly. Um, just adequate fluid, adequate hydration. If you don't have any renal issues that uh, they're telling you how much fluid to drink, you know, two to three litres, flush all that stuff out of your kidneys and keep yourself well hydrated. Uh, I touched earlier on the ongoing research to, into the value of exercise in managing fatigue. An exercise physiologist like Molly, who's going to speak later, or a physiotherapist like Julie Allen, who's on Saturday and the All About Me can be used to design an exercise program to help increase your energy levels. Molly's coming um, to be the third speaker today. She's an exercise physiologist who helps run our um, Fit to Thrive program, which has had great success in getting patients back on track. And um, emotional support network and communication, I've talked about. Communicate, it's key, both with your treating team and your emotional support network, like your friends and family. They can't help you if you don't tell them how you're feeling. Uh, it helps come to terms with diagnosis, helps come to terms with subsequent treatment, and prolonged stress can leave you feeling completely worn out with nothing left in the tank. So talk to those around you and recognise that you might need a bit of, a bit of added support during this time as well. And, and again, recognise a bad day might be just a bad day. So, moving forward, good communication <coughs> with the haematologist and the treating team. So they work with you, they might adjust your medication all the time, thalidomide often, you know, um, take it at night, gives you a great sleep and you can wake up in the morning. Take it in the morning, you're tired all day. Um, they might change or modify your diet or your fluids, dietitian, renal physician, etc. Lots of different things. And um, treating the cause, treat the myeloma, help, help treat the fatigue. Uh, creating strategies for coping with and managing fatigue. You might want to speak to someone. Um, you might want to keep a diary. Actually, a great thing to do is to keep a diary. You can, um, you can, if mornings are your are your time for increased energy, and you find yourself dipping in the afternoon, plan plan your activities around the morning, and make yourself at home in the afternoon, or vice versa. Just depends on you, and everybody is so different. We've talked about exercise, but look at time planning, which your diary can help you with as well. Um, 
Goal planning is another one. Marianne and I were talking to before, before and she said, uh, go to bed with a dream, wake up with a purpose. You know, set yourself a little achievable goal the night before you go to bed and oh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try that. It might be a walk around the block, you know, just, just creating those achievable strategies. It can also mean talking to other patients with myeloma. A few people here come to our myeloma coffee cake and chat which is fantastic. We get so much positive feedback from that. So if anybody would like to come, they're more than welcome. I think we had about 29 at the last coffee, cake and chat. And um, even people who get dragged along by their wives um, tend to have a positive experience. <laughs> the ones that don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and d look, don't, don't forget the Leukaemia Foundation support coordinators. We, we're here to support you and your family however we can. You just have to put your hand up and uh, we're pretty easy. We come to you, you can come to us. Yeah, but um, we're here for you from diagnosis to right through, right through your myeloma journey. And I've talked about that. Modify activities, support network, coffee, cake and chat. And there's, this is a picture of um, that exercise that I was telling you about. So if anybody, oh, well, I won't rain on Molly's parade actually. So um, I was just about to talk about Fit to Thrive. So yes, thank you. Mm -hmm.